So I'm with Simon McBride, uh, blues rock hero, really. Um, here to talk about some PRX kit. So if, we'll start with the guitar. Um, right. That's a good talking point. In the light, you can see it a bit better. It's a bit dirty, but you know. That's how we like them. I haven't cleaned it yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> that to be played. So uh, yeah. tell us a bit about it. Well, basically, this guitar is it's a one of a kind. You, you won't get it. It's made especially for me. Um, it's a single cut semi-hollow, um, it's hollow around here. It's just pretty much a standard 408. Uh, I get rid of the tone knob. I haven't used the tone knob in 25 years, so I'm just like, don't need it. Yep. So, you know, typical 408 switching, you know, it splits a little toggle switch for each kind of pickup, so you can have a single coil there, neck pickup humbucker there, or vice versa, or both single coils. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the neck is a pattern neck, is the, I think it's described as, in yeah. technical speak. <laughs> um, but apart from that, it's just pretty much everything standard, really. You know, I think it's a PRS guitar, just as I'm sure everybody on this site knows that they're all made to very uh, high spec. So, you know, um, it's just a standard mahogany body, mahogany neck, um, just a rosewood veneer on the, the headstock. and. Yeah, I think this is one of the Generation 3 trams. It's, mm -hmm. it's a locking uh, lock tram, locking saddles, and it's locking up top, up the top as well. So, yeah, it's 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 my number one guitar at the minute, so I have lots of other PRSs, but this one goes everywhere with me, so. So if that's number one, what do you think is number two? What's your other go-to if that one was in the shop for anything? I have one pretty much exactly the same, only it's a single cut, or not a single, a double cutaway, sorry. So, you know. It's 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 not semi hollow. It's just a solid uh, body, but it's just double cut. It's exactly the same color, same trim, same pickup, same everything. So nice. that will be my number two. Um, number three, uh, I have probably number three would probably be my first ever PRS, which I got about. Uh, it must be twenty twenty two years ago. Um, Paul made it for me. It's it's I don't bring it out very often. Um, if it even these days, simply because it's more valuable, valuable to me personally, mm -hmm. because it's I've had it for so long, and yeah. you know it, it sounds great. It just it's, it hangs on a wall in my studio at the minute. I just play it in the studio. That's all I do with it. Um, so if, if I was to bring another guitar, out, my two two of these uh, stop working, I would uh, grab it. But lucky enough, these never stop. Yeah, you know, never break. So. I'm, Kind of very blessed to be uh, part of the PRS family, so yeah, it's great guitar. Yeah. Great. So how did that come about? Paul made your first one. Did he come to you? Did you go to him? If well, you can tell us such a classified information. No, no, it's it's very easy. I met Paul when I was fifteen. Um, I was a kid and I was playing, you know, uh, a lot of the big music trade shows in London. You know, my my dad brought me to them, and I was doing clinics for like Marshall Anthem. And I just met Paul through those. He always came along and got up and had a jam, and that was it. He just decided, right, I'm going to make a guitar. And I was like, I think 15 year old, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I've been with PRS for a long, long time. So, um, I think, you know, they, they kind of consider me part of the family, as they call it. So, um, you know, I've been there for a while. Paul's a lovely guy. I get on well, very well with him. So, yeah, it's. Right, it's a great company. And they look after you pretty well using some of their amps as well. Can you take a look at this lot? Yeah, you know, they're very, very, very good to me. Um, so we've got the Archon 4x12 cab and Kemper. Yeah. What brought you to the Archon? Obviously, a lot of people consider it a bit of a metal headed, one trick pony. Um, you're doing a pretty good job of proving that idea wrong. Yeah, well, you know, the, the Archon is, you know, it initially was brought out for, you know, hard metal and. But in my experience with it, it it can do everything really. You know, it, you know, you can do the hard rock thing. Like I, I use it for various gigs. Uh, when I play with Don Airy, I would use the Archon. Uh, it's a bit more. It has that heavier sign. You know, it has the the, the depth control and stuff on it. Uh, but I also use it in my own gig, which is a bit not as hard rock. Uh, works great. You know, it's a, it's a good all round amp. It's not just a one trick pony as people think it is. Uh, it's a great clean channel on it as well. It's so, 
you can take it out to funk gigs or whatever you want to do with it. Um, but yeah, it's a, you know, it's it's a good workhorse. It comes everywhere with me, you know. So I have lots of other heads at home, you know, with their their custom made you know, by Paul and at the factory. So, but as a workhorse, I just bring that out and it's, it does everything I need it to do. Really. Amazing. How do you find it compares to the HXDA? The HXDA is it's more. Uh, it, more specific, um, okay. it's pretty much it's one side. It's yeah. it's it's basically a Marshall Super League. That's pretty much what an HXDA is. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, no, it's it's a great it's a great head. I love it. I, it's it's in my studio constantly, and every 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 record that I play on, it's generally on it. Um, but again, it's one of those amps. It's old school. It only works at volume ten. Yeah. So you have to yeah. turn turn it up full blast to get, you know, because what happens is when the once the power amp valves start, you know, working very well and you know heating up, the, the, everything just tightens up with it. The yeah. low end especially when you turn. It's the same with any of those kind of old school amps. You have to crank them up loud to get things to start working as they're supposed and to. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You need a good set of earplugs, but you know, so I don't really bring them out because it, you know when you're playing smaller venues, you know, it's, you're just killing people, you know, with volume. And you know we live in a modern world, and <laughs> we don't need to take people's ears off, you know. So we've got yeah. PAs for that, you know. So, but yeah, the HXDA is great. It's it, as I said, it's a different kind of animal to this. You know, that's Definitely. that's more a good all rounder. The HXDA is if you want that kind of just martial sound. That's that's it. You know, and it also has the little switch you can switch it so it sounds more like the actual Marshall bass amp. You know, okay. Then it's the HXDA Hendrix Dwayne Allman. Mm -hmm. Dwayne Allman used to use an old Marshall bass rig. So when you switch that, it kind of, everything kind of loosens up a lot, you know, especially with the low ends. It gets very kind of spongy and just kind of very cool. It's kind of reminiscent of a, a box or something. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, it's 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 a great head. You know, it's I use it all all the time in the studio. So. Right. So we heard some pretty cool sounds come out of sound check, listening yes. through the door. Mm -hmm. um, let's have a look at your pedal board, stray away from PRS for a second and let the gear nerds talk. What have you got? What are you using? Well, at the minute I'm using um, to probably everybody's uh, fear. As, uh, I'm actually using one of the Kemper profilers, simply because I, I can bring all my PRS hands, which I have at home, with me, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. in one box. Um, and for smaller venues, it's just great because, uh, again, I get the sounds that I want um, in one machine. So that's that's the main part of the pedal board, is just the switcher system. Um, I have a TC Electronics Delay, which is just the standard X4 flashback. Good stuff. I have a uh, an Octavia, which is made by a company in Germany called Valbrut. Um, I've tried a lot of Octavias. This one for me just seems to work the best for what I needed to do. There's a lot of great Octavias out there, you know, but you know, there's so many different variations on pedals these days. I have just lost the will with some things. <laughs> um, I have a T Rex Octavius, which is uh, an octave below and an octave high. Okay. So it's kind of a little bit like the Electric Harmonics Pog. You know, so you can kind of, create that kind of organ sound if you want with the, the high octave and the low octave. Yeah. Um, again, it's great. I like the T-Rex version simply because it's a little quieter. Right. Um, then the, the colorful pedal the yeah. one that everybody goes, what's, what's this pedal? You know, <laughs> it's a company called Jam. They're a company based out of Greece. Okay. Um, it's a phenomenal pedal. Uh, they make from all their pedals are, are absolutely astonishing. Um, that's a uni vibe, and yep. you know, I've tried lots of uni vibes and nothing comes close. You know, unless you go out and buy the the original, which is I don't know four thousand dollars or something stupid. You know, yeah, so, probably. Uh, but uh, for me, it's it's the best one out there. And, and uh, you know, I also have a couple of other pedals by them. I have a chorus pedal called the Waterfall. Is just amazing, you know. Lots of other guys are you start to use them now, like Steve Lugather and I see Paul Reed Smith, he has one himself. Um, good review, yeah. Well, we both we I remember we were at a music shop somewhere, did a, a clinic, Paul and myself, and we we, we discovered these uh jam pedals and we both fell in love with them. And so he bought one of the waterfalls and 
I was lucky enough to give me mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and next is just a standard Fox Wawa. Wow. Nothing fancy about it. It's just a standard Wawa. Wow. Uh, I like it a lot. It's a little bit smoother than the, the Crybaby for me. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I don't use it a lot. You know, I'm not a big Wawa person. You know. Um, it's only on the odd song here yeah. and there that I would maybe use it. And apart from that, it's pretty simple. These, these things are just, you know, line boxes, you know, just to see the wires going everywhere and it's just a power supply and stuff. So cool. I, I have lots of other pedals which are in the studio and they stay there. <laughs> yeah, a bit easier to fly with something like Camper. Yeah. Are you profiling and everything yourself? Or do you have help from PRS when you come to putting things like the HXCA profiles in? No, I just do everything myself. Um, it's, it's very easy to do. You know. yeah. um, so I have profiles of all my PRS heads in this, you know, and plus I have a few other different things like a few Fender amps, which for, is for clean sounds and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, you know, I, it's, it's great. It, you know, it's never truly going to sound like a valve amp, but you know, it's for me, it's ninety nine percent there. That's you know, enough. it's so, and for touring, it's it never breaks. You know, uh, my last tour I did last year, I think I broke two heads, two valve heads. So, yeah, you know, you just have to go. Okay, I need need something that I can just, especially for doing flight. It's mm -hmm. if you're just flying at the festival, you just bring the camper, throw in the plane. Plug it in, away you go. Because the thing is, when you're doing festivals, you don't get sound checks. It's just you get 20 minutes to plug mm -hmm. in and go. So uh, there's nothing worse for me as a musician if I'm standing on stage and I cannot stand the sound of the guitar up behind me. It just really yeah. makes my gig uh, a miserable experience. But mm -hmm. if I have something there which is great, like the camper, just plug it in, go. I'm happy. You know, it's brilliant. And obviously, I would love to bring all my other amps out, but you know, you wouldn't. I know it's not just not practical these days to do mm -hmm. that, you know. And some and the, uh, likes of the bigger gigs I would do with, with the likes of uh, Ian Gillen or something. I would bring the usually the X, HXDA and uh, I have another head which I Paul made for me before that show. Um, and it's kind of like an old Marshall, really. But, and I could because you know you're playing arenas, you know, ten thousand people, so you can you can get away it, with cranking, turn it up. So it's yeah. great. So, um, but yeah, you know, for me at the minute the campers just. It's great just doing the job. So. Right. Cool. Good stuff. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. Well, thanks for uh, inviting me to uh, your site and interviewing me, I guess. No problem. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you.